Okay. Well, you're making it hard on me tonight. We're spread to the four winds here. If you tighten in a little bit, won't hurt my feelings any. We are in Romans chapter 4, and we, we worked on that, started on Romans chapter 4 on Sunday. And I don't know about you, but I found that to be a really hard class. Um, we've, as we went through chapter 1, 2, 3, like we said, I, I think we understood everything that Paul was saying, you know, to those Roman Christians long ago. And, and we can make points and applications from that. But now here in chapter 4, it gets a little bit more difficult to understand. And we can understand, too, though, I think, that the focus of what he's saying, and to whom. Because he's trying very much to help those Jewish Christians to understand that depending on their lineage, you know, through Abraham, is not the answer to their hope. And that's really the focus here of some things that he's saying. We looked at the first few verses, and we talked in some detail about those on Sunday, and I don't want to go through all that detail again, but I think we do have to spend a few minutes reviewing that so we can understand where the rest of the chapter goes. We'll go through the rest of the chapter. One way or another, we're going to finish chapter 4 tonight, because on Sunday we're starting chapter 5. Now, the real point of the context here, and the context being what is said before and what even comes after this, is that man cannot be justified by the law by the old law, the law of, of Moses. But it is God's grace that gives us a means to approach him in faith. We're looking at the text, chapter 4 and verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something of which to boast, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, to the Jews who are counting on the law. I can only imagine it's... it's Maybe hard for them to think of the idea, saved by faith? I mean, by faith Abraham believed, by faith righteousness was imputed to him. And they must be wondering to, you know, to Paul, like, what are you saying here? And to think here again about Abraham, we're thinking about the role of works in his relationship to God. Remember, the Jews, with regard to the law, doing the law, works of the law was all so important to them. And again, as we said, they referred to Abraham often. They would, they would boast in the fact that they were of Abraham. Abraham was their father. Everything was about Abraham. But here, what Paul is saying, oh, he's not discounting Abraham. In fact, I think he's elevating Abraham. But it's not about his works. Because if Abraham had a position before God because of his works, he would have something to boast of, right? That's what he'd say. He would have something to boast of if it was his works that put him in a favorable position before God. But Paul says, but works leave a debt. The idea being you cannot do enough works to put yourself in a favorable position before God. And the emphasis here is that Abraham believed what God said. And it was by that faith that God imputed righteousness upon him. Just trying to think about this in view of the Jew, that Jewish Christian of long ago, thinking about how, how they are hearing that and, and wanting to respond to that. I want to th I'll talk about a phrase here we, we looked at Sunday. You know, when he says of Abraham that God uh, counted to him for righteousness, or some versions might say imputed to him righteousness literally means to put on one's account that God put righteousness on the account of Abraham. It wasn't something Abraham earned. God put it there. And it was Abraham's faith that allowed him to put it there. Was it something deserved? No. No, it didn't say it was deserved. Was it something that he earned? 
No, he said, no, you, you, earn, you cannot earn that salvation. It's not possible. And so of Abraham, still we're thinking, just reviewing some things we talked about Sunday. You know, um, was Abraham saved by works? You know, works? Was Abraham perfect? No. no we, we know better than that. He was not without sin. If he had been perfect, then he could boast in that, verse 2 says. Um, but verse 3 says, but he believed in God. There was faith. And then what about that faith? Belief or faith was the basis of that relationship that he had with God. God expressed his will. Abraham believed and obeyed. And think about what that would have said to Israel. That there was more than just being born into a particular family that made a relationship with God. There was obedient faith. And that started with Abraham. Think about what that said to those Jewish Christians who were so quick to say, oh, but we are of Father Abraham. Oh, but we have done these works. We, we, are, we are following the law. If you try to work your way in a relationship with God, verse 4, now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. No matter how much work you do, you still have a debt. You can't earn your way into a relationship with God. These are some of the key points that we talked about Sunday. If Abraham was justified by works, then his, then his reward would have been deserved. He could have paid off his debt on his own. Grace would not have been needed, nor would God be needed for that matter. These are the things that we have in our mind as we get into chapter 4. These are the things we talked about Sunday. Trying to understand what Paul was saying to those Jewish Christians. Because what he was saying to them long ago. Is still right and still applies to us today. It's the same points that work. Now with that. Take a moment here about any comments or questions that, that you might have. A little louder, Joe. More Christian, Christian ideas about you know, the New Testament is more about grace and those and things like that. And coming from that point of view, um, it just kind of hit me. Just, do, do you think that, is there any evidence to suggest that the Jews reading this letter were holding up Abraham as this pillar because of his works and not as much because he's saved by the Maybe so. You know, maybe so. And it's like, like, like you just said, and sometimes we say, you know, the, the New Testament is more about grace and mercy. No, I don't think so. Grace and mercy is all about that in the New Old Testament, grace and mercy. You know, we look at it in a different way, but it's God's grace and mercy that gives man an opportunity to have a relationship with him. And I think that's in part what he's saying here. I mean, God's grace was extended to Abraham long ago. And Abraham responded in faith, and he had a relationship with God. Now, it, or, you have your question? Yeah. yeah, just real quick. You said you can't earn a relationship with God. Can you earn a separation from God? Yeah, I suppose you could earn a separation from God okay. by, by not obeying him, by not responding in faith. You know, that's going to keep you separated from God. Sure. Yeah. You know, the point that, that the next few verses that we have to look at here. Um, in fact, let's just read this. Let's just read this. Let's go to verse 9. We're going to read, let's see, 9 through 12. I've practiced reading this today because it's a real tongue twister. How many times can you say circumcision and non-circumcision in one, in one reading? Okay? And so you have to kind of follow the flow here. And so circumcision is speaking of the Jews. Okay? The uncircumcision, speaking of those who are Gentiles. Verse 9. Does this blessedness then come on the circumcised only or on the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it reckoned? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised 
but uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also, and the father of circumcision to those who may not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. Whew. Do you follow that? What is he trying to say? Just in brief, just in real brief. What is Paul trying to say? That's right. And, and to try to, to look to Abraham and say, we're just like Abraham. Our faith comes, or our, our relationship with God comes just like Abraham's. You know, Paul is saying, uh, no, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You know, because the law was not even yet, had not even come. You know, Abraham was not circumcised. At that point, about 14 years later in a covenant with God, he becomes circumcised. But that was not the beginning of his relationship with God. And so how do, how do you think the, the Jews were taking that? I mean, you, you probably put yourself in their position and what maybe they were thinking about that. Like, what? You know, what were they saying? Several hands here. Marty, I think you were, no? Oh, Tim. They viewed Abraham as their defense. Mm -hmm. And Paul's taking that away from them. Yep. Said, no, yep. Abraham is not your argument. He's my argument. That, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I think this is a beautiful point. You know, it's like they're leaning on Abraham to kind of make their argument right there. And, and Paul's saying, um, no, you can't do that. I love this. It, he's Paul's argument. That's right. Barry. That has always been part of their claim. You know, we, are, we yes. can trace our lineage mm -hmm. back to Abraham. We bear this mark of circumcision on our body. Yeah. Therefore, we're right with God. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Good, good. Another hand or two, I thought. No? Okay. All right, we're getting a good picture of this now. You know, in what Paul is trying to, to say here, um, and, and this is getting more to the point of the Jewish issue here. Um, the decisive question, you know, or point is faith was counted to Abraham to righteousness, but that was before circumcision. And so looking at the big picture, God's intentions for initiating a covenant with Abraham were not just to give Abraham biological descendants. God's plan was to save the world through one descendant, through Abraham, you know, because of what God did through the Messiah. Uh, the true descendants of Abraham are those who walk in, in the steps of faith like Abraham. We can hold Abraham up. It's not just the Jews that can hold Abraham. We can hold Abraham up. He is an example of faith, obedience, willingness to hear what God says and, and accept that and do that. It's for that reason that God imputed righteousness to him. And that's what we need to learn from that too. There's powerful lesson. There's powerful points there with that right there. Um, we can go on and look a little farther to text. Any other comments on that? All right. Yeah, Joe. I think it's interesting that the, the Gentiles may have never thought of Abraham as someone that they could tell look up to, but this after reading this, they oh. wanted to change their mind. Yes. Okay, this is a good point. We'll say that later, but let's deal with that right now. And, and so really as we get into this, it's like it's not just the Jews that can look to Abraham and, and find encouragement, strength, and direction from him, but the Gentiles can too. We can. We, we can see, we can learn from Abraham and be inspired by his faith. Uh, we'll get a little bit more into that story here as we go on. In fact, let's look at this next section right here. Okay, I, I want to read verses 13 through 25. That's a long read. Are you going to stay with me on that? Like you're not going to like doze off in the middle of that or anything, right? Okay. 
I want to read through that long reading because it all fits together. And then we're going to go back and, and take a few verses at a time right here. And, and really what this is talking about is it's, it's, it's Paul trying to help these Christians understand the promise that is made and granted through faith. We're at verse 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him who he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your seed be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up before, uh, because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Okay, that's the big picture of the story. You know, where he's saying, he's, he's putting Abraham in a, a position. It's a strong position, powerful position of his faith. God made promises. Abraham responded to that. God delivered on his promises. That's kind of the big picture of some things. If God delivers on the promises made to faithful Abraham, what does that say to you and me? What does that mean? Yes, he, 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 God cannot lie, remember? You know, when God makes promises, we talked about it a little bit on Sunday, like about judgment, the times where God has promised judgment. There's a lot of judgments in the Bible. We talk sometimes uh, about the final judgment that is to come, and I know it's going to come, because every time God has talked about judgment of his people, there was judgment just like he said, Right? His word is true. And we turn that around on a more positive note, maybe we would say. Hope, justification, salvation that comes through these promises of God, I believe in those just as much. Because we can see, just like the promises he made to Abraham long ago, promises that seemed pretty far-fetched even, you know, promising him a son in his old age and Sarah's womb was closed, she was old. God promised this is what's going to happen. Abraham believed and God delivered. That's for us. I mean, it was for Abraham long ago. And it was for those who followed him. But today, that's for us. That's for us to see and understand and have confidence in the promises of God. These things written long ago, let's not think it was just for those in the first century, please. We can understand things from this and we can gain faith because of these things written long ago. Now, let's break this down just a little bit. Okay, we're going to look at verses 13 through 15. Let's read it again. 
For the promise that he would be the heir of the world, he being Abraham, that Abraham would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Okay, a, a, a promise here, a, a, a promise, the, the promise that he is giving. The promise comes through what? what, what what's he saying here? The promise comes through what? Or through who? Faith. Through faith. Okay, the focus here is, is on faith. Abraham is in the context. He, he's, the, he's the metaphor that, that's being used here. Now, what it does not do is come through lineage or circumcision or the law. This relationship with God. Abraham was not justified according to the law as we talked about. The law had not been given to anyone. You know, and so remembering the circumstances now, the big picture, the law had been broken by Israel. We were talking in the first century. And I think a lot of these Jewish Christians understood that, that many times, I mean, so much is said in the Old Testament, so many times Israel broke that law. And so they were not simply saved just by being Jews. Oh, some tried to say that. But that was quickly put down. The promise of inheritance comes through faith. That's the point of emphasis. That's the emphasis of the faith. And Abraham demonstrated that faith. The promise from God that, that he, that Abraham would be the heir to the world was through faith. That is the promise of God. Any thoughts? And, and that's, uh, Linda, that has to be what we can take away from this. And it wasn't just a matter of Abraham saying, yes, I believe. All right? I mean, sometimes today people have this idea that, oh, do, do you have faith? Yes, I believe in God. Well, the devil believes in God. That doesn't save. I mean, with Abraham, did he believe? Yes, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Yes, he believed. He obeyed what God said. It was obedient faith that put him in that position. And, and, that's what, and does that work for us today? Absolutely. That's what Paul's saying. That, that, that's what he's saying right here. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. Sometimes we think, well, well, uh, faith is, is if, if it's something that we believe enough, then it'll happen. No, it's not about us believing enough. It's about what God does. It's about, you know, our, us responding to what God says. God can do enough. You know, is, because we can't do enough to save ourselves. We can't pay the debt. God can do that. And that's where our faith has to be. And that's part of some things that's going to be said here as we go on. You know, it's about believing what God can do. You know, uh, anyone else having come to Abraham and, and saying, you know, you're going to have a son. You know, 100 years old, you know, old, his wife is old. I mean, anybody else saying that, Abraham would have said, no, that's not going to happen. I don't believe you. But God saying it is the point of emphasis. And his faith in what God says. It's what God has the power to do. Is what makes our faith. That's what made Abraham's faith. Other thoughts? Yeah. Tim. This takes strength for me. Paul is saying. You who boast in Abraham. You who boast in the law. Are not like Abraham at all. Right. Right. Maybe saying to us, you who boast in Christ are not like Christ at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Very. That, that would be a good analogy. 
You know, if, if we are not living for Christ, if, we don't, if we're not living by faith in him, you know, but we're boasting. You know, I, I think we said Sunday. We really, we're really hard on the Jews, you know, as they would often say, but we are, Abraham is our father. We are of Abraham's lineage, you know, and we're really hard on them. And yet sometimes Christians are pretty quick to say, my mom and daddy were Christians, you know. My grandparents were Christians. I was raised in the church, right? Those may be true statements, but if that's where we're placing our hope, then we sound just like those Jews long ago, right? Barry. And another letter, Paul says that he is, through Christ, he has given us his great and precious promises. The same God who promised Abraham that he would bring about a son in that old age is the same God who gives us these promises. All yeah, we have to do through his son. And, and, and respond to what he says. Just like Abraham. Here's another just an absolute point. It's not just that Abraham said, I believe. Abraham responded to what God said. You know, this, this whole passage screams of obedient faith. A lot of people in, in the world today, religious people talk about faith. Well, I, I wonder sometimes faith in what, because often what they do has nothing to do with what we find in Scripture. And it's easy, and in some circles at least, it's somewhat popular to say, you know, well, I have faith, or I believe in Jesus. Abraham didn't just say, I believe in God. He responded to what God said. You know, and, and we haven't talked, I mean, it's more than just this text here. There's other te texts that we would look to that we would see and understand in what ways Abraham responded. There's an assumption here that we already know those things. You know, but we have to respond as Abraham did. David? Until he didn't accomplish what God said. And then the scripture was fulfilled. Was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. What God had counted to him all along. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was a process. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. In Genesis 22, which is the chapter where Abraham offers Isaac, verse 18 says, In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Mm -hmm. Point of emphasis here. Yeah, because you have obeyed my voice, all nations have been blessed. Are we seeing some key points here that just kind of stand out? I hope, right? You know, that, that has to carry through the rest of our, our study, you know, as we go through. Have you noticed, like with, with Romans, how point after point builds one on another? If you start in the middle of Romans, I think you get pretty discouraged. Because you wouldn't understand, like, what does this mean? Where is this going? You have to build from the beginning as you go through. And then it starts building in a good way, I think. Donna. Abraham believed God that he was an heir. Mm -hmm. But when he told him it was going to come from Sarah, he laughed. Mm -hmm. Sarah laughed. Yeah, Sarah laughed. And, and, so, and so sometimes we, we kind of... You know, we, we kind of we're pretty hard on on Sarah because, you know, it, it's like she laughed. In what way? I'm not sure how that was. But Hebrews chapter 11, you know, gives us another impression about Sarah that she had faith, she had confidence by faith. Sarah, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, and and so she had faith that this was going to happen too. And so it, it demonstrates, you know, both the faith of Abraham and of Sarah. And him. Where at? Where are you at? I'm 
drawing a complete blank on that right there. But yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if I read just that and nothing more, I would be I'd be thinking that way. But when you read Hebrews' account of that, and it talks about the faith of Abraham in in that regard and being promised a son, you know, well, it makes me think otherwise about that. You know, that, I mean, if it was unbelief, if he didn't believe, we wouldn't be reading the same story in Romans chapter 4 that we're reading. I think it would be even worse than mm-hmm. Unbelief, I, you know, I'm struggling to think that it's just unbelief. You know, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to hear what you think on that. Sure. You know, he can so. still believe and laugh. Yeah. He's still pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's super embarrassed. Yeah. You know, at that point, Ishmael was already born. Yeah. He's kind of like, oh, well, you yeah. said it's coming through Sarah, and I already screwed up. So he could have been laughing at his own stupidity. Yeah. Right. Yes. So basically, because this obviously was a miraculous conception. Yes. She was barren. Mm-hmm. So then when it happened with Mary, she was given the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. They had already seen it once, and they felt like they were followers of Abraham, but they didn't. I, I guess they just didn't have faith that God could do that, or he did do it. Yeah. I, I don't understand how they, you know, who would have thought to be. Yeah. Pharisees and all would have said, look at this, you know, here we go. God has done this again. Yeah. But with Mary, it was, was a virgin birth, right. but, a but virgin still, still it, yeah, it was miraculous. I mean, a, a virgin and, and then somebody who couldn't have any children because of her age, it's still miraculous in my opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. I'm glad you brought this up in, in Genesis 17. I keep thinking that, that Sarah is the one that laughed, but Abraham is the one that laughed. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Both did. Both did. Where does it, you know, it say Sarah? I, you know. What's that? That's right. That's right. That's right, in chapter 18. Thank you, that's good. Chapter 18 and uh, verse 12, that's right. Man, well, I knew Sarah did some laughing somewhere. That's <laughs> right. Jeff. That's right, exactly. And that's the point. Right. So the faith was there. Sure. He got he got over his his uh, human weakness. Right. Good. Good point. One more comment. Somewhere here. Yeah, yeah Chris. Well, that's right. That's true, too. And, and, and even with Sarah's response, you know, that way, still Hebrews chapter 11 paints her as one who by faith believed in the one who promised, you know, that she would conceive. So real quick, we got to move on.
especially if it ends up in chapter. For me, it helps if we're substituting for the word faith a lot of times the word trust. Mm. That's right. And, and the context here, That's what we see. Through the sacrifice uh, and the absolutely. And, yeah. and he believed that God would, would do what he said. Trust that he would do. Let's look quickly at verses 16 through 18. Uh, well, wait a minute here. i got to get to the right page here. Back to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all, uh, us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your seed be. Faith and grace, we see here in, in the same text. Faith and grace, are these connected? What do you say? Are these connected? Yeah, yes? In what way? How? How? Faith and grace, are they connected? How you obtain grace. Say it again. Faith is how you obtain grace. Okay. All right. Go on with that. Grace is not unconditional. Mm hmm. There has to be based on, again, I would say trust. Yes, that's and faith. In God's plan, uh, a, a sacrifice that would remove sin. And, it, and that provides the grace. Is, is faith and grace connected? Yes. Throughout the Bible story, we see that. You know, it is God who is offering grace. It is faith in what God is offering that demands our response. So, yes, we see that, that connection. You know, again, grace is not a New Testament term. God's grace is demonstrated over and over in the Old Testament. And there had to be faith to respond to that grace. It's not called, you don't see grace called out in that way, but it's the same idea, God offering direction, you know, grace. Um, God, God's grace was offered, Abraham responded uh, to it by faith. And Paul using here the faith of Abraham is a powerful point. And it was intended to resonate with those Jewish Christians long ago, but we get the point too. We, we get the point with that too. The promised inheritance to all seed can be received only through faith, not through the law, but by faith. And neither Jew nor Gentile have advantage over one another. And that's a big part of what he's trying to, to say and to accomplish right here. And so the promise that's talked about, the promise is intended for whom? For all. For all. You know, for us today. For it, it, it's for all. The promise is assured to all of, of Abraham's offspring, not just those who are of the law, uh, but, but as this text said, the Gentiles who are of the faith of Abraham. I want us to have that faith. The same kind of faith that Abraham had. You know, uh, the, the demonstration of Abraham's faith. We're not going to read the text, but the next few verses here, we're talking about, you know, the, the, promise, the promise of offspring. You know, that demonstrates to us the, um, the, the, the faith of, of Abraham. And uh, the therefore in verse 22, because of the faith of Abraham, therefore, 
it was imputed. That is, faith was imputed to him for righteousness. Therefore, because of, of, of what he, he did, his response, faith demands a response. Always. Anyone can say they have faith. Faith demands a response. And we see that with Abraham. And today, still, we learn from Abraham. We can share in the same hope. We can share in the same hope of, of Abraham. Okay, so our time is gone here. Yeah, Ron, go ahead real quick. Uh, before you close, yes, I just want to add, when we're talking about Abraham laughing, might be better thought of Abraham rejoiced because John mm -hmm. 8 and verse 56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. If you go back to uh -huh. Genesis 17 where it mentions that, he falls down in, in humbleness. And, and so it's very likely that it may yeah. What was that? John 8? John 8, 56. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's good. Good point. Verse 19 says, He was not weakened in faith when he considered his own body. Yeah. Right. Right. A lot of points that are, it continues to be made about the faith of Abraham. Sure. Okay. Sunday, God willing, we're going on to chapter 5. Sunday and Wednesday next week. I want to go all through chapter 5. In fact, we might get into chapter 6 by Wednesday. Is that a lofty goal? Maybe, maybe it is. But, you know, we already know we can't get through all 16 chapters of Romans without really cutting something somewhere. When we get to chapter 12, 13 in, in particular, practical applications, I'm seeing we're probably not doing with that a lot in class, you know, because you've heard that preached several times anyway. So we're going to have to cut something somewhere. But on Sunday, chapter 5, there's an outline already fixed for you or made out there in the, in the hallway. Be sure to pick that up on the way out. So glad you're here tonight. Thank you for coming.